We're going to be talking about an introduction to Archive Digital. And there will be a brief introduction. Then I'm going to go into the two ways of searching. One is archive search, and then the second one is index search. I will be giving an update of the Swedish American churches, and then also talking about the conference specials, and then open it up again for questions and answers. This is our English homepage, which is archivedigital.net. And then in the upper left-hand corner, you will see the number of images that are in the database. Today, there are more than 88 newly photographed colored images, or about, there's 88 million newly photographed colored images, or about 176 million pages of Swedish historical records. On the far right-hand side, you'll see the different types of packages or subscriptions we offer. And I will be talking about the specials later. Down here in the lower right, you'll see a link to a blog, and that's the English blog. Uh, we try to publish an English blog once a week. And if you like us on Facebook, your newsfeed will be updated or else you can come to our pay homepage and just look at the blog. And some are news items, some are you know, talking about updates to the database, but there are also some tutorials within the blog. There's about 500 blogs in there. Now, if you are new to Archive Digital, you will have to register before you can purchase an account. And you go in here and you actually will register then you will enter in your name and address and also your email. Also, if you wanna be on our mailing list for newsletters, which you usually mail out once a month, you can also come in, or in here to register for that. Then once you're registered, then you can actually, and purchase a subscription, then you can actually start the program. Now you can start the program from our homepage and just click on start. This is a browser-based application. It is no longer a download. And I did get a couple of questions about that. How do I download it? You don't have to download any software anymore. Another way to get into the application is to go into directly app, app, archivedigital.se. And then you're gonna enter in your email address, which is your username, and then the password that you have created. And then you will log in. And you'll get the screen in the middle, it says open new archive search tab and also open new index search tab. And these are the two ways of searching within Archive Digital. Also on the left-hand side, you'll, you will again see tabs for archive and index search, but we also have one for map search. And this is where you can ser search for aerial photographs and also parishes using the map function. We also have a family tree that you can create. And this is where you would go there. You can bookmark records and you can go here to open the bookmarks that you have saved. Now, first look at archive search. Now this is a traditional way of searching. So if you've been doing Swedish genealogy for a long time, this is what you're probably the most familiar with. You had to know the archive that you were going to, such as the name of the parish, maybe the name of the court, maybe the name of a police archive. And what you would do is you go to archive search and you would put in the name of that parish and then do a search and that would bring up the archive. Here, you can do that also here. You can just put in the name of the parish if you know it, or you can also search by archive type and then also country. And we have, um, with Sweden, that's the predominant one, but we also have records for the United States for some Swedish American church books. Also, we have Swedish churches in other countries such as France, even Germany, Ukraine, so there's other countries that you can search in. We do have a fairly significant collection for Oland and Finland. If you're also searching in Sweden, then you can actually limit the search further by county and then also province. Now we have over 100 archive types within Archive Digital, and some are very specialized. However, the most popular ones are at the top of the list, such as parish congregation or the church books, district court for the court records at the estate level, I'm sorry, at the district level, and those are also the estate inventories. We also have the district registrar or the tax records at the district level, military records. And then after that, they are in alphabetical order. I would like to point out that not all of the archives have been translated into English. 
Uh, one example is Barnhus, which means orphanage records. And some examples of other archives are like the police archives, where you can find passenger ship manifest, prison archives. We have lots and lots of prison records within Archive Digital. Okay, let's do an example where we search on archive type. You can select archive type, click on the down arrow to bring up a list of the different archive types. And we'll select parish congregation and then just default to Sweden. And you see we have over 2,800 parish congregations within Sweden. So this is why it's somewhat important to know the parish where your ancestor came from, although it's becoming a little bit easier uh, the fact that we've now indexed the population of Sweden from 1820 to 1947. So it's no longer a, that you really have to ha have it, but it's also very helpful. You can also search by United States. And again, we have some Swedish American church books, primarily for a few states in the Midwest. And you can further limit the search by going by state. So here, if I limit the search to to Nebraska, I find that we have 120 parishes or congregations of Swedish American church records within the state of Nebraska. And then I can select a particular uh, archive and then you know, look at the volume list. Another help when you're searching within an archive, especially one that has lots and lots of volumes, is you use the filter feature. And in this sample, I'm looking at St. Peter's in Mamo, or Mamo St. Petri. And I put that in the archive holder since I know the name of the parish. And I've done a search, and there's one archive that comes up. Then I open the volume list, and I see over 557 volumes. And I may not want to just be searching through for what I'm looking for. I can also filter that. And I can filter it by the type of source, year range, or also if there's some additional information in the volume, such as maybe that particular parish is divided into quarters and that's been documented in the archive information. So to filter on type of source, I click on the down arrow and that will show me the various types of records. So here there's some marriage records, there's birth and christening records, I can find household records and so on. So I've selected congregation records for the years 1896 to 1898. So now it is my volume list is now reduced to 12, a little bit more manageable, but I want some more. I want the one that has the information about the section of Hamburg in Malmo in that parish. So I put Hamburg in the top part, and then that says there's one book, A2A colon seven, and then that's a book I can go to. So this can be very helpful, especially when you're looking at uh, archives for court records. You know, sometimes there might be over a thousand or a couple, couple thousand volumes. It makes it much easier to actually search by using the filter. Okay, index search. Now this is becoming the most popular way of searching because here is where you can do name searching. And it's making Swedish research much easier and much faster. And this is what the goal, company's goal is, is to really make it easier and faster so you can be much more successful in doing your family research. So what you can do is go into index search and then under index search you'll see index source and it usually defaults to the population of Sweden 1820 to 1947 at the top of the list and then after that you can scroll on this arrow and that will bring up all the list of all the databases that you can search by name. Now, the first one is the population of Sweden, 1820 to 1947. And I'm gonna get into that in a little bit more detail. You can also search um, on the census of Sweden, 1940, 1950, 1960, 1975, and 1985. So here you can search for anyone living in Sweden at the end of those years by name. We have the census of Stockholm, and that's everyone living in Stockholm at the end of 1945. Again, we're actually indexing by name a state inventories, or these are records that are very similar to probate records. Uh, we're indexing those by name. Again, this is a work in progress. Also military service cards, 
These are for people who served in the Swedish military between 1902 and 1950, and you can search by name. The Swedes and the US 1940 census, that's everyone living, uh, everyone in the US 1940 census who said that they were born in Sweden. Immigrants, or these are people leaving um, passenger ship manifests for people leaving from ports within Sweden. And then the birth, marriage, and deaths are index records from the church books of birth, marriage, and deaths. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. We also have a name searchable uh, index for the portrait collections for some photographs within Stockholm. There's a boatswain active list. This is, these are for people that served as boatsmen during the latter part of the 1800s. And these are service booklets that you can look at. There's an agricultural statistics for 1944. And then the Ritterhuset or the House of Nobility, a collection of photos. And there are more uh, collections that you can search by name. This is not all of them. Again, the most popular one is the population of Sweden, 1820 to 1947. And this is a name searchable index of all the household congregation books between 1820 and 1947 for all of Sweden, 127 years. And this was created in partnership with My Heritage. And I'm getting uh, quite a few questions of people saying, you know, what has been indexed of the church books? The household books are really like a yearly census. And these are really the gem of Swedish research. So all of these have been indexed from 1820 to 1947, and they're available. And this is for all of Sweden. And it's important because very few people immigrated prior to 1840. So there's a very high likelihood that if you have an ancestor who came from Sweden, that you can find that person on this particular index. Now, this is the largest name, in Swe uh, largest name index in Sweden, over 152 million name searchable posts. Also, this includes the Stockholm Rotman's archive for the years 1878 to 1926. Now, why is this important? Because in Stockholm, in the very large parishes, they stopped creating household records in 1878. And instead, there was a Rotman's Institute that was created that was responsible for maintaining the population statistics. And that lasted from 1878 to 1926. And those records have been integrated into this particular database. So we'll do a search. And we're going to look at the 1820 to 1947. Now, on all of these indexes, or most of them, you can do both a simple search and an advanced search. Under the simple search, uh, you just put in the variables that you're interested in, and then it goes out and searches all the records and then brings back a match, some matches for the ones that were the hits. And the advanced search is a little bit more controlled way of searching. And so we're gonna look at both of these examples. The first one is for um, an Eric, born 1887 on August 7th in the par uh, and he was living in the parish of Bomhus. And I went and searched with those parameters and I got no records. Now this particular person actually was the founder of the Greyhound bus system here in the US. But what I did was I did an approximate search and you see this under simple search. And Eric is often spelled E-R-I-C and then also E-R-I-K. So by putting an approximate search, it brought up all, uh, all of the Eric's with the E-R-I-C and E-R-I-K. So he used K. And now I have three matches and now I can analyze them. So the one for 1881 to 1890, I open it, I get an index record. The top actually has his name, his birth date, also, it has a toolbar. I can print the index record. I can correct it if the index does not match the source. I can copy it, bookmark it. I can save it to the family tree. Then it has a section on the personal information, such as the first name, the birth date, the relationship to the head of the household, and then also the parish where the household book was created. In this case, it was von Hus, and the place within the parish, Limbach, and the time span. And then we have a link to the original record. 
and then also shows the members of the same household. So I can link to the original record and I can compare and make sure that the index record is matching the original record. If it's not, then I can actually go up here and send a correction. Okay, with the advanced search, this is opening, opening up many possibilities. And this is really making it much easier for people to find out where their ancestor came from within Sweden. So there are four sections for this particular index. There's a name, birth, location, and household. The name, here's where you can search on the first name and the last name. You can do a partial, you can do a wild card. Also gender. Birth, you can do the exact birth date or also a range of years if you don't know the exact birth date. Also birth parish, county, and then country if the person was born in a different country. Under location, that's the place where the household book was created. So for instance, for place, that could be the farm or the village and the parish uh, and also the county. But household, this is where you're adding maybe other people who lived in the same household, such as a spouse or a child or maybe a sibling. So this is, can be a very powerful one. And here's an example that I've been given permission to use. This is for a real, this is a real case. And this person was known by Swain Pearson, Pearson in the US. And he was born October 6, 1860. The immigration dates were shown 1877, 1875, it varied in the US records. It was stated that his father was Pear Pearson and that his mother was Hannah Swans. And then he also had a sister, Bessie Pearson Moline, who was born on October 11th, 1852. And again, the immigration date varied in the US records between 1866 and 1877. So what we did was we go, went into advanced search and we did it on the first name, just with an S with a wild card. And then we limit it to just the males and then put in the exact birth date, hoping that that would be correct. And then in the household section, we put the sister's birth date. And we came up with two matches in Dura Road in Christianstadt. And then we were able to analyze, and this is the one for 1861 to 1868. I'm gonna blow it up a little bit here. So we have the child's name, got the birth date, and now we have the birth parish and the place uh, or the parish where the person was living in Hokenship in Dura Road. And then down here, we have all the other members of the household. So the father was Pear. Well, that matched. The first name matched, not the last name. Hannah's first name for the mother matched. And then Sven and Bekta, their birth dates matched. And then we could also look at the original record. And then to go further, and I'm not going to go through all the steps that I went further, but I followed Sven further and I found out that he moved out on the 12th of April, 1880 and the moving out record showing him going him to North America. And then I found his passenger ship manifest where he left from Malmo on the 26th of April going to Princeton, Illinois. And that's exactly where this family ended up. I also followed the sister and she left in 1872 and I found her passenger ship manifest also going to Princeton, Illinois. And so this was the right family. So this was a situation where they had waited, you know, for several years and they weren't able to be successful. And this is how this particular uh, index solved that problem. So again, we have a given name of Swain Pearson, but the actual was Sven Pearson and then he had a military name. So that was what was in the, actual, in the Swedish records. The birth date matched, immigration date didn't. And that's very common. The father pair, that was you know, that was equivalent. Pearson, he may have used the, uh, the the father's name. I mean the son's name, Swain's name, instead of the patronymic. So that made sense. Hannah was right. We're not sure why Swan, and the sister's information was correct. Her immigration date was not, but that again is pretty normal. So. This is an example. So many people, the information has been passed down for several generations. Some of the information is correct, some of it isn't. 
So you can use the information that you have and play around with the searches and come up with the possibilities. Okay, now we're gonna look at birth, marriage, and deaths. So we're also indexing by name the birth, marriage, and death records within the church books. And the goal is right now, we have index for the 1600s up until the late 1800s or 1900. That's what the goal is for all of Sweden. So currently, all the parishes within the county of Cronenberg, births, marriage, and deaths have been complete to the latter part of the 1800s, even some up until 1920. We have 80 parishes within Södermanland, most of Barmland County, and then up to 1860 for Jämtland. So these four places that I've mentioned, birth, marriage, and death records have been indexed by name. Now, in addition, the births between 1800 and 1840 have been indexed for all counties within Sweden, except for the county of Copperberg, and that will be done in a short period of time. We are also in the process of currently indexing by name marriages between 1800 and 1840, and about half of Sweden is done now. And that is a work in progress. For Skåne, which is in Southern Sweden, which is the county of Mamma Host and Kristianstad, all the marriages from earliest times up until 1840 have been indexed by name. And these are being done in partnerships between Archive Digital and local Swedish genealogical societies, as well as some private individuals. So how you do the search for that is you go into index search and there's actually an index for the birth and one for marriage and one for death. So depending whether you're looking for birth or marriage or death, you pull up that particular one. So here we'll search for a birth record for this Carl Magnus Halen, and he was born uh, September 24th, 1812 in the parish of Hopentorp. I'm doing an advanced search. I could do a, uh, a simple search. I'm also searching Carl, both with a C's and K's. I'm using a vertical bar, which means or. And here's the index record, Get one match, and it has his birth date, baptismal date, the birth location, the place in the parish, and the parish name in the county. We've got the father's name, Hoken Halen, he's a soldier. The mother, Maria Johann's daughter, has H-U-S-T, which is abbreviation for Hustru or wife. She's 33 years old and the child is a male. And then you look over here to the record and you sort of see everything in the, in the record except for the names of the baptismal witnesses are on the index. And again, you notice that all the headings are in English. And I mean, this is a very nice record, but uh, sometimes it can be difficult to read the old handwriting, but this is a beautiful record. Okay, we've also indexed uh, the passenger ship manifests. So these are people leaving from ports from Sweden in Stockholm, uh, Helsingborg, Malmo, and Gothenburg. And Gothenburg is the largest port. That's where most people left, for many people left from. And these start in, in the year 1869. So here we look for Johann Frederick Halen, who was born January 1st, 1846 in the parish of Hopmantorp. And this is a household record from Sotorola. He moved to this place from Stockholm in 1866. And then it also says that he's going to North America in 1869. So I can go into the index search, look for immigrants. And then I can search by uh, simple or advanced, by first name or last name, also by birth date, the exact or range of years. And since usually it's only the age that is on the passenger ship manifest, I would use a range of years. I would not use the exact birth date. And then departure date uh, has exact date or departure year. Again, I would use a year from the household book and you can also search by vessel or port. So this is an example where I'm searching for this Johan, but I have put it J and then a wild card because I have found that a lot of the first names within the passenger ship manifest are abbreviated. So, and then on Halen, that's a pretty, that's not a common name. And then the immigration year or the departure year, and I'll blow that up a little bit, down here of 1869. So here's the index record. 
And you do see that the name was indexed. Uh, Johan is J-O-H and then F-R. Halen has a calculated birth year. And then it has the date that he actually left on the ship, which was May 21st, 1869. He left from Gothenburg on the ship Plato. And again, it's always important to look at the original record because there's always usually additional information. And on this, inf on this record, it does say that he was a tailor, the Swedish word, and it said that he left from Stockholm, which was not true, although he had lived in Stockholm. And sometimes it will be showing the larger city uh, near the place where the person left. And then it says he's going to New York. And sometimes you have to take that with a grain of salt. But in this case, he actually was going to New York and ended up in Brooklyn. But sometimes they may just say the big port that they go to and then they go further inland. Also, we're indexing the estate inventories. And within Archive Digital, we have estate inventories for all of Sweden, beginning in the late 1600s up until 1960 for most of Sweden. Now, we're, again, we're in the process of indexing these by name. It's a work in progress. But here is one. We'll look for Carl Magnus Halen, who died June 4th, 1900 in Hopentor Parish. And the first thing you need to do is really verify the death record. So we verify that. We go into index search, look under index source estate inventories. Again, you can do a simple and advanced search. You can search by first name or last name from year to two year. And sometimes the estate inventories were not created in the same year. Uh, they were supposed to be done within three months after the death, but I have found them up until two years later. So you might wanna expand search there the county, the parish, and then also the name of the district court or the city court where the estate inventory was filed. So this one, I just uh, searched on the last name of Halen. I did it from and to year of 1900. I got two matches and I want the one for Hopmantorp. And you get an index record with the name, the name of the court, and in this case, the name of the place where the household inventory was performed or the residence of the deceased the parish and the county and the year it was taken. And then also there was some extra information saying he was married to Brita Stina, Frederick's daughter. And I've actually circled his name and the names of the heirs, but here's that Johann Frederick, who we saw his passenger ship manifest. It just shows him living in America and several of the other children also immigrated to America. Okay, we also have some quick find searches and these are not named uh, searchable indexes. These are actually helping you to maneuver within certain collections, such as the SCB extracts, the tax records, and also the general muster rolls. I'm going to show you a couple of examples, one from the SCB, SCB records, and then also the tax records. Now, when would you like to look at the, when would you want to look at the SCB extracts? These are extracts of birth, marriage, and death records. And in 1860, there was an institute called Central Bureau of Statistics that was created. And at that time, they required the minister to send an extract each year of the birth, marriage, and death records. And so essentially, we have two sets of birth, marriage, and death records within Sweden, the original church books, and also the extracts after 1860. Now, there's also a privacy law in Sweden that prohibits some records from being published online if they are younger than 70 years. And right now the cutoff is 1950. So, so there might be cases where we haven't been able to film a record because of the privacy rules. So let's look at this Alarum Parish in Mamahus, and we want the birth record for 1940, but we only see that they go up to 1934. So what we can do is we can go to the archive for Alarum, and actually look under archive information, click to something, it says NAD, and we're linking to the National Archive database. And that's gonna show us what is actually in the provincial archives, the actual physical books. And it says that the next book is 1935 to 1973. So that there are some records that are protected by the privacy law. So that's why it's not on Archive Digital. So in order to find this birth record for 1940, we go into index search and we look for an extract. So we do a quick find SCB extracts and then we can search by page type. 
And for births, it's Fura, and you do need to put the F in, or Vigda for marriage, Dura for death. So we have the years from 1940 to 1940, and then also the parish. And so here we get one match, and we open the image, and we have the first page. So this is a quite a nice tool when you're looking for the SCB. Within Archive Digital, we have SCB extracts from 1925 to 1947, except for Stockholm City, uh, for Stockholm, and that's from 1930 to 1947. Okay, for mental records. Now, you may want to look at tax, tax records when maybe the church records have been destroyed, or maybe the household records don't go that far back in time. So here's Alarum again, and we see the household records begin in 1813. So we want to go back further. So we can do some searching for tax records because many of these begin in the early to mid 1600s. So you can search by a range of years, the parish and also the county. So I just did a search on Alarum, just the parish. I came up with 146 records. The first one beginning in 1658 and the last one in 1837. I could open the volume for 1813 and then these are organized by place name and then start doing the search. So these can be very helpful when you're trying to go back further in time. Update on the Swedish American church books. Again, most of the records that we have filmed are primarily in the Midwest. Our largest collections are in Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, and Nebraska. And then we have a few in surrounding states. The way you find these is you go into archive search, search for the United States, and then limit your search by state. So we do Nebraska, and then you select the archive you want. In this case, we do the Omaha Amen. Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church. We open it and there's over 91 volumes. There's congregation records, birth records, marriage records, records showing people joining the church, leaving the church, also some memorial booklets, a lot of information. Many of the congregation uh, records, if they have an I, a lot of times that means that there's an index in the front of the book. So here's one, we'll look at one. And here is a Johann uh, Justius Kronholm says the records are on page 117. We can go to page 117. And there we get more information as far as the birth date, the place in Sweden where they were born, sometimes that they were born in Sweden, the date that they joined the church, often when they came to America. Uh, so there's a lot of information in these records. They're very similar to the, the Lutheran church records are very similar to the, the Swedish church books in Sweden. Okay, we do have a family tree where you can actually document your research and the sources. And then we also have a brand new book in English. Uh, this was written by Hokan Skogshow and it's been now translated into English. There's 190 pages in color. And if you go to our website, it will direct you to the American bookseller and it's $35 plus the shipping. If you live in Canada, uh, we are working with a Canadian bookseller and they're supposed to get the books this evening. So if you want it, uh, you might send us an email to check exactly how to purchase it within Canada because the shipping costs will be cheaper to purchase it from that, uh, the Canadian bookseller if you live in Canada. We're also offering a beginnings package and this will continue even after Roots Tech. This is a three month subscription plus the book and that's 995 Swedish kroner or about 120 US dollars. 